All right, this is John Cole with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you, and I know what you guys might be thinking. John, why the heck are you walking out of a doctor's office, man, on your gardening show? Well, hey, today is a very special day for me. Today's the day, actually, I got a medical prescription right here, a uh, therapeutic cannabis recommendation here in California. So now, now that I can uh, legally use, because I was prescribed by a medical doctor, cannabis. So I want to go on the record that I believe all herbs whether it's cannabis or anything else, are good things that can be grown and used in their whole natural state, unrefined. So I'm not an advocate of any kind of refined drugs or anything like that, but uh, cannabis has definite medicinal uses. And you know, I had some health challenges that I shared with the doctor and he gave me a one year recommendation for the use of medicinal cannabis. So what this means is I can now go with my uh, basically recommendation or prescription to a dispensary and buy cannabis for me to use but see I'm not gonna do that <laughs> you know and I'm gonna say that again I'm not gonna actually do that I'm not gonna go to a dispensary and buy the cannabis you know going to a dispensary and buying cannabis at the dispensary is like you going to the grocery store and buying groceries right I try not to do that either right I try to grow my own stuff so now with this recommendation or prescription I can now grow some of my own crops if I choose to do that, which is probably gonna happen at some point, or better yet, then going to a dispensary is going directly to the source, directly to farmers uh, to get uh, you know, my medicine. And uh, what I've determined is the best place to get my medicine is actually at a local uh, collective that actually uh, a number of uh, people that have their recommendation or prescription join and then they collectively grow for you know all the people in this collective so this is basically like going to a farmer and getting it farm direct through like a csa for lack of a better kind of term now one of the big challenges with the medicinal cannabis is you know i definitely agree that there are so many different ways you can use a medicinal cannabis it's recommended on here lotions and creams tinctures edibles and vaporizer and there's different ways to uh to use it. There's high THC varieties and high CBD varieties. I'm more in favor of the CBD varieties. That's the kind that actually does not get you high and has some very therapeutic benefits. You know, much like I talk about the power of growing your greens, like the vegetables in your garden, you know, all kinds of greens have different phytochemicals, phytonutrients, antioxidants, vitamins and minerals and all this kind of stuff. And so does the cannabis leaves. So that's what I'm gonna be focusing on for my treatment is the high CBD variety of the cannabis leaves. And I'll be juicing these leaves. Many people may also smoke them for you know a different kind of medicine. And that's cool if you guys wanna do that. I think cannabis should be legalized everywhere across the whole entire nation. But unfortunately it is not at this time. Because of this, there's no national standards on how you can have organic cannabis because much like if you go to the grocery store and buy conventional foods they're spraying the crap out of different pesticides and all this stuff on the foods and then you're eating that and ingesting it but at least when you ingest you know pesticide ridden foods our body could detox some pesticides to some extent although i still don't necessarily you guys recommend eating that kind of stuff but the thing is because there are no federal standards on growing organic or clean or bio uh, clean green certified uh, cannabis there you know some growers because you know for many people you know growing is about the money not necessarily about the medicine and how it can help people are using a lot of different nasty chemicals that are being sprayed on that aren't even approved for edible crops just so that they could protect their harvest get their buds and sell the medicine to the dispensaries that sell to you so the majority of the cannabis being sold as medicine is being you know, sprayed with things that I would never put in my body that aren't even, not even approved for food use. So yeah, this is a big problem. And in the uh, series that I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna do, I think, uh, two videos, maybe more, on visiting the collective I joined because I'm now legal to do this and showing you their grow operation, sharing with you guys some of the best practices that they're doing to grow some high quality chit, <laughs> some high quality medicine to get that out to the people that's not contaminated with uh, toxins and pesticides. So before we head off to the medicinal cannabis collective that I joined, I do wanna share about uh, the doctor that I went to here. It's actually called Compassionate Health Options. You can learn more about them at green215.com. And if you go there, they actually have a 
15 uh, locations throughout California. So no matter where you live in California, you could visit one of their offices. Uh, they have basically medical doctors on staff that you're going to talk to, share with them your problems, and they're going to see if you're a candidate for you know getting a medicinal card if you're interested to keep, stay legal on that. And here's the thing: if you uh, mention this little ad, say you know I saw that little ad, you know for a free ID card, you get a free ID card. That's going to definitely uh, save you some money on that. And also be sure to mention my name to let them know that you know you saw John's video and that's why you're there getting a card so you could get legal and uh, you know hopefully grow your own. So anyways, let's go ahead and go to the collective that I joined to show you guys some of the best practices on growing some of the best organic uh, medicinal cannabis ever. So now we're in the soil prep area. And this is an important area here because basically what happens is they take in the soil and all the different, many of the different inputs they use actually to feed their plants. They have it here, they prepare it in this area. So the first thing I want to show you guys is the soil medium that they use to grow all the plants in. And I mean, this is key, having a good base and a good foundation to grow your plants in. What they're using here is this stuff in the back. It's actually called the Cocoa Forest Soil Medium from Monster Gardens. This is what they've used for excellent results. But they don't stop at using the Cocoa Forest Soil Medium. They make it even better than how it comes right out of the bag. And they use many of these products. And actually, it's no surprise that it's many of these products that I also use in my garden to you know, grow larger plants and get more production and also healthier plants. But more importantly for me, more nutritious plants in my garden. So it's cool to see that it's at this collective, they're actually using the same products I use in my very garden to get the high quality results because simply what, what I've been doing in my garden works and evidently, you know, they've learned it can work here growing medicinals as well. Some of the products they're using specifically are the Worm Gold Plus. This is the, my favorite worm casting in the world. I will not settle for any substitutes. This is the one that has a document behind it that shows it can increase your yields by up to 400%. I did actually interview the literally the engineer, a mechanical engineer who formulated and came up with this and how to make the worm castings the best of them all. And you know, I only want to use the best when I'm growing and evidently that's what they want to do here as well. And uh, in addition to that, they got the Gaia Green Glacial Rock Dust over here and the Azomite over there. And these are the, the rock dust, the trace minerals that they add in the soil up to 70 minerals are contained within these and most growers may be concerned with just adding like NPK, the 10, 10, 10, 15, 15, 15. Whatever those three numbers are, those are only three minerals, but in my opinion, the plants need so many, so many more than just the three minerals that standard growers feed them. And this is getting put into this system simply by the rock dusts. Now besides just the rock dust, they also want to feed the plants as needed. And for that, they use a few things. Number one, the pure protein is basically a fish hydrolysate, one of the best in the market that I found, you know, that I'll use in emergency situations when I need to give my plants that boost. You know, when my plants have some transplant shock, my peppers every year kind of got yellow leaves, I hit them with the pure protein and boom, they, their leaves green up. And guess what? If you're growing indoors, medicinally, or outdoors, vegetables, fruits and vegetables, this stuff's going to work, man. It simply is the best. So that's uh, right here, that's what they use. In addition, they add other things like the Living Alaska Humus right here. They also got some of the different Boogie Brew products that I like. They got the Boogie Brew Compost Tea. A matter of fact, they're so confident in the Boogie Brew Compost Tea here that in their vegetative state, when the plants are under veg only, they only feed the Boogie Brew Compost Tea. They don't feed them anything else. The plants love it. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later. But yeah, so they use the Boogie Brew compost tea and I like to feed my plants in my garden the boogie brew compost tea once a week you know to just give them that extra boot then the boogie brew compost tea is not necessarily like a fertilizer and gives them a lot of nutrition but what it does it adds in the biologics with some light nutrients in there to help ramp up all the things that they've already pre-added to their soil mixture to get that get those systems revved up because part of the system here is that it's not just about dumping nutrients in their plants it's about creating an ecology you know, creating a living soil because there's microbes in the soil that basically break down nutrition in the soil and feed it up into the plants. So they really want to encourage that biology. And it's these products that do just that. So next what they got is a boogie humus and that's over there. And the boogie humus, what that is, that's a, a fungally dominated compost. So if you check my past videos, you know, I have a video, you know, how to supersize your plant growth with 
wood chips and rock dust. And I've already done a video. I visited my buddy's place up in near Portland, Oregon, where they are growing huge giant kale leaves, man. Well, they weren't growing any medicinals, but they are here. But if you got giant kale leaves, I mean, all plants respond to certain nutrients, and the stuff in the boogie humus will probably, you know, make your plants grow a lot bigger, and that's probably why they're using it here. But more importantly, it inter in introduces some more live cultures, some of the fungal cultures into their growing medium, because not only do you need the bacteria, you know, in your soils that are alive, you also need the fungus, and that's uh, definitely adding some of the fungal material in the boogie humus. Next, we got the insect frass. So, earthworm castings right here basically is what comes out the backs. Do earthworms have butts? <laughs> that comes out of the butts of the earthworms. It's their poop. And what the insect frass is, basically it's the poop of certain insects that not only add nutrients, so it's two, 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 it also more importantly adds, once again, like the worm castings, the biologic, some of the beneficial microbes in the soil to keep this system revved up and working properly. Finally, we got the boogie bricks, and that's definitely going to add some uh, sweetness, if you know what I mean. And then we got something like the uh, full humix, a humic acid concentrate. And then more importantly in this area, they also keep the diatomaceous earth. And this little guy here, which is actually called a, a duster. So the diatomaceous earth is uh, one of their practices they use for insect control organically without spraying any toxic chemicals. And I will interview uh, the grower here about this in another episode where we'll go over specifically how to deal with pests organically, you know, whether you're growing in an indoor situation like this or even outdoors because the same tips and techniques will apply. So yeah, in this area they mix up the soils using a lot of these different items. They also make their compost teas that they will apply to the plants and basically a general prep area. Now the next thing I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to actually get suited up and we're gonna actually show you guys the growing area and uh, what's growing back there and how it happens. All right, so now we're ready to go into the grow op. And before I take you behind the, the curtains there, um, I actually have to get suited up. And this is for a very important reason because, you know, they don't want people in their street clothes. They have special clothes that they use to go in there that are clean, that are designated only for the grow rooms. This is to prevent contamination. And in addition, besides having clean clothes, they get suited up every single time they go in the back to prevent you know, unwanted bacteria and fungi and more importantly the pests from getting back in there and affecting their plants. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, suit up in this uh, suit right now. Alright, so I feel like a, a space cadet, man, suiting up, going into space. Maybe I'm going to paint some houses or something. Alright, <laughs> I'm all ready to go back and check out this grow room. Alright, so now we're ready to go behind the iron curtain. Well, technically this is not an iron curtain, it's a fabric cloth. And, you know, they have many different procedures they've implemented here. I mean, it's all like really scientific, for lack of a better word. And this is not like an airlock. When you go into a grocery store, especially if you live back east, you gotta go through one door, and then you get the blast of air, and then you go through the next door. This is not like that. This is a light lock, because if you have, you know, light coming in the rooms at different times, it could mess up your cycle, so they want to prevent this. In addition, this also acts as a physical barrier to prevent pests. And even in addition to just the physical barrier, they also spray this with uh, rosemary oil that may, you know, detract pests from coming in. And they also treat this whole area with diatomaceous earth because, you know, prevention is even better than the cure, in my opinion. So actually, let's go ahead and uh, come in. And before you go in, you got to yell, coming in, to let people know that, you know, there's no light infiltration. It's not a good thing. All right, coming in. So now we got the, the single lock. Now we got the double. And here we are in the hallway. And uh, in this area, this is where they basically put together all their nutrients. They mix some of the nutrients in these very barrels here. They're using this hose. They call this little uh, watering stick thing, sword that they actually uh, water each individual plant's plant with and we'll show you actually the technique they use which is really cool I wish I would do this in my garden I just don't have the time and then over in this area this is their R&D area where they're doing some alpha testing for some companies out there these companies have organic products that they want them to use at North Coast Naturals to see how they work compared to what they're currently doing this is one of the things I admire about North Coast Naturals you know they're not only just finding out what works now, but they're trying to raise the bar because what if they can increase their yields? What if they can increase the quality, which is what they're focused on? They're all for it. 
and uh, these products have been tested outdoors, but now they're going to test it indoors here. This is actually the boogie soil, and this is a specially infused soil, uh, basically infused with the uh, compost teas, never available before. So this is indoor testing, alpha stage, definitely really cool. So besides just this soil that they're going to be alpha testing, what they're also using is from Oregon's only, based outside Eugene, Oregon, they got some of the nectar products, but these are just not the standard nectar products, which actually they're using, and I'll show you guys in a second. This is special stuff, man. Nobody else has small bottle and big bottle, and that's all I know. All right, so you guys might be wondering why I look like I'm all green right now and I'm a Martian. It's like, because we're really in outer space. No, just kidding. It's because what they do is they got these little green lights here, and these green lights, basically, the, the, the green lights are invisible to plants, so plants do not know that these lights are on. So it's like, uh, I don't know, x-ray vision or night vision on your uh, camera. This camera's not on infrared vision or nothing like that, or night vision. It's simply these lights that cannot be seen from the plants. And this is very important because any additional lighting that's of the wrong uh, spectrum at the wrong time could mess up your whole plant cycle and they could jeopardize their yields. All right, so besides those alpha testing, this is some of their regular protocol that they use. Right here is where they actually make some of their compost tea. So they got the boogie blue water filter. This is very important when making compost teas. They use a filter to take out that chlorine because the chlorine will mess up the microbes, kill the microbes. You can see they got their air stones here to bubble their compost tea. I'm looking actually at one of their rooms that they actually feed only the compost tea and the veg state, which I'll show you guys in a minute. And uh, besides that, they got the stuff to mix it up. And then over here, they got um, some of the different uh, ratios and uh, formulas they're, they're using. But this is their master uh, selection of all the different feeds and the different products they're using. I'm gonna go over them for you guys and reveal what they're using here for you guys. They got all different kinds. They got things to control the pests, which we'll also talk about a little bit later with the master grower here, such as the uh, the big time exterminator. Now this bottle looks pretty crazy, like it's some kind of you know nasty chemical pesticide, but this is actually an enzyme-based product. They got stuff like the super clean neem. This is actually the very neem oil that I use in my outdoor grow, and uh, they got. Things like the Thrive Alive Vitamin B1, and they got some rosemary oil. They got the Dr. Bronner Sal Suds. They got this stuff called the Sea Green. They got the Azamax. They got all these different products. They got the Red Bugs, the Great Whites. This is known as the uh, Mic Microbe Lift BMC. It's a mosquito control. They got the Root Pack, the Pure Protein, and of course the, uh, the Mycos, the fresh mycorrhiza I like so much. Over here they got some different things including the boogie bricks, the liquid karma, some alcohol to sterilize their stuff and they got some, uh, some of the nectar products here. And if you look over, I mean this is what they're using. I mean they're mainly using these nectar products aside from the boogie brewers, their main source. And they got all these different ones. They got the, I don't know, Demeter's Destiny Liquid Calcium and they got like just every one of these products, Athena's Aminas. <laughs> They got this one, the Hercules Can Harvest <laughs> Liquid Bone Meal, the GM, the Gala Mana Supplement. I mean, I could go over these all days, but it looks like they got the full selection of the Nectar of the Gods. This stuff they really like. We're going to have to ask a master grower about these Nectar products and why they're using them. So you may wonder, you know, if they got all these different nutrients and all the different natural pest controls, how do they remember what formulas and how much of each thing to add. Well, they've solved that issue by one of the procedures they have in place here. And I really want to encourage you guys in your gardening to basically make procedures, whether that's in your head like I do, or to write them down and uh, you know keep track of what you're doing so that you know exactly how much of what to add in there. So in here, they got some of the different boiler application rates, including the different uh, products and what they're not compatible with. Here they have some of their top secret boiler recipes. Here they have how to brew up the compost tea and some of the things they add to the compost tea to make it even better. Here they have a calendar. You know, I mean, this is how the level that they take their grow operation. I mean, they take it really serious. They gotta do things like clean the air conditioning vents and the filters and spray rosemary. This has to do with just infrastructure and like the building and things they need to do to maintain the building because you're not maintaining the building that may cause some challenges with your grow and they don't wanna have any risks that's gonna mess up their grow. So over here, 
we got uh, calendars and a, a clipboard and this is an area that I really want you guys to be aware about I mean they're keeping track of a lot of data you know this is very methodical I mean the master grower here is called MIT and he's called MIT for a reason because literally he's taken this and made it into a science he's going in here and he's made the recording each and everything they're doing so they have a record of you know it, hey we did this on this day and this day something's not right or this day we got a lot of growth and maybe that's because they you know fertilize the root zone or put the tea in there or maybe they had some challenges with some bugs and they sprayed that day so they made a record of that maybe they didn't have any problems with bugs but they just did a preventive maintenance application of some of the natural pest controls to ensure they don't get pests in addition another thing they do is they take the high and the low temperature in addition they take the high and low humidity I mean they take a lot of data one of the things that's really cool to me I mean as a business management major in college I learned about some of these different practices I mean they basically have all these different numbers on this chart and it may look like no just numbers to you but this is very important data I mean the first number they put on here is how the person that's going to be inspecting the room is feeling that day you know they want to have good vibes good vibes in their person and bring these vibes into their plants because in my opinion you know plants know how you're feeling if you're feeling shit in your all raucous and stuff that energy is going to transform your plants and they're trying to grow uh, and striving to grow the highest quality medicinals to have you know really good energy in the plants and so if their energy level is not at a high level if they're feeling sad not feeling good don't want to be here man they won't they won't go in and do and go in and check their plants up because they don't want to put that energy in the plants so they put first how they're feeling on a zero to ten this is an eight then they put the high and low temperature the humidity the ppm and then also they take a look at the plants and subjectively say okay what are the plants looking like on a scale of zero to ten right they want to know if the plants aren't looking good they just write it down because they're keeping notes hopefully a lot of the times their plants are going to be a ten because if there's a problem then they're going to address it immediately and be able to review all this to find out what exactly is going on I think the next thing I want to do is I actually want to take you into one of the modules where they're growing so uh, let's check it out so now we're in the veg module and I'm sitting underneath one of these lights and I gotta move pretty soon because I probably get sunburn or something but they're using these lights actually to grow all these plants and I'm in between all these plants and there's only 28 plants in here that's not a lot of plants for you guys that know about growing and you know they're not focused on numbers alone they're focused on the quality and there's a few reasons why they are growing fewer plants the first reason is very important I want to encourage you all you growers out there to do this with your plants to have an intimate relationship with each of your plants if they had a hundred plants they couldn't dedicate and devote as much time to each plant than if they had only 28 I mean that's literally a quarter of the plants and they're doing this in 20 gallon um, geo pots many growers may have a lot of plants in smaller size pots and they can use the same space but they want to really nurture the plant and get the most and highest production but not only highest yield and production but also really high quality and they could do this by focusing more time on each plant because they have literally less of them now the other reason that's very important that they're doing is to be compliant with the laws right uh, certain laws state you can only have X amount of plants you know for this situation and they want to stay under that under legal limits to keep this you know totally on the level and by having less plants but growing higher quality plants they can still get a decent yield out of it to make it all work so as you guys can see we got all these different plants in here and the one of the things that's amazing to me is that they're not feeding any nutrients to these plants at this point they're literally only building the biology in the soil by feeding this the boogie brew compost tea they're feeding that on a regular basis to build the biology so when they take these plants out of the veg into the flowering mode all the biology is going to be ready in the plant and ready to accept some of the nutrients to really blast them in outer space so that these plants could uh, grow really well and produce for them now another thing they're doing because they are focused on growing you know fewer plants what they really need to do is they need to maximize the production out of each and every plant in here and how they're doing that is they're not necessarily growing the plants up e up erect what they're doing is they're taking the plants and they got these special little I don't know if you guys can see these here these wires and whatnot and they're taking the plant that would normally go upright and they're bending it over 
you know, normally the plant grows on the top growth, and that's where all the magic happens, you know, where the, where the bud sites are. But what they want to do is they don't want the plant to focus on that. They want the plant to make new upshoot and upgrowths where there's going to be more budding sites. So they're literally taking this plant to go up, they're bending it over, so now all the plants that would have normally been on, this, on the sides are now growing erect, so now they're going to have a lot more canopy surface area when they get in to the next stage of development that actually we're going to take a look at next. So now I'm going to get to show you guys module B and this is where they have their plants in the flowering stage. Now they've already harvested about half of this room today which I'll get to show you guys how they're drying here at North Coast Naturals. And uh, what's in there left is about half the plants. They've harvested the eight week plants. They got the nine and ten week plants left in there. So I guess without further ado, let's go in there and show you guys how they got this room set up. So that's very important to their success. You're going to notice that they got all these lights and these are HPS lights, high pressure sodium lights and they use both a digital and magnetic ballasts. And the ballast, the magnetic ballasts may be putting lines in this video so that if you see that, that's what's occurring. Now besides just the lighting, you know, one of the cool things is they thought about all these different systems and they systematized how they're growing here, you know. This is a professional place and what they got here is they got this whole rack set up. They got two by fours with this wire, heavy gauge wire mesh that they basically hang all their lighting and all the all the um, the vents and tubing. In addition, of course, they got the CO2 generator up in there. And uh, going back down here, I mean, this is how they're growing their plants here. So now what we're looking at is the way they're growing each of their plants. Now this is a really cool and unique way that I've never seen used before, and it's kind of cool for this specific situation. What they got here is they got the uh, three quarter inch PVC pipe and they got the plants basically up on a little shelf. So they got about 12 inches off the ground. They got some uh, hardware cloth, you know, heavy gauge wire. So it's more durable, they got it screwed in. And this basically raises up the plants so that the plants can get better aeration and the root pruning in the 20 gallon geopods that they're in. Also it allows all any excess over water down to the bottom. But before they water, I mean, what they do is they do what's called a thirst assessment. And I think you guys should do this in your gardens. Basically, they got these little um, zip ties, heavy duty, they got them strapped up. And they basically come here and they lift up the plant. And they see, because they do this each and every day to every plant, they know how heavy it should be when it's watered and how heavy it is when it's drinking up the water. I mean, I know if I go to my pots in my greenhouse, if they need water, because I can lift up the pot and see the soil, like it looks dry, it's light, whoa, that needs some water. So then they can judge to give each plant the proper amount of water without using a moisture meter. So that's really cool. I mean, they really take the time to nurture each and every plant and maybe they even name each one. I think this one's called Sally. <laughs> so besides that, what they're doing here, they're really focusing on canopy management. The canopy is like when you go into a forest, they got the big trees with the leaves and that's what they're focused on here. They want to make the most amount of canopy. And as you guys can see, this canopy pretty much fills this whole, I don't know, four foot by four foot frame and it's just loaded with all kinds of leaves and also the buds. So let me go ahead and show you guys how full and rich this guy looks. So now what I wanted to do is I want to show you guys this angle of one of the plants they're growing here. I mean this thing is magnificent, nice big spread on it. But I wanted to show you guys from down below the canopy because it shows you like from this angle you guys can see the massive canopy and just all the different, you know, flowering sites and some of the leaves that are growing. And one of the things they got to do here is called canopy management. What this does is this literally will ensure that they're going to have the highest level of medicinals in this plant that they could get because they're focusing on the top 18 inches, maximum two feet top tops because the light's not going to penetrate down far and anything down below, this is energy the plant is needlessly putting into these little flowering sites that are just not going to produce. So like I'm actually doing them a favor by picking off their buds mm, and eating them. Wow, that tastes amazing. I've never before ever in my life tasted little buds grown on clean green certified crops here. Oh man, it reminds me of eating like hemp seeds. I could feel like, I could taste like the fatty acid content. Now, you know, marijuana and hemp seeds, not the same thing, they're related, but the hemp seeds you could get in your health food store are very essential for you guys to eat, whether you're a grower or not because of the essential fatty acids. But of course, if you're a grower, you might want to just come and uh, <laughs> harvest your flowers and eat them. And don't worry, this will not get me high. 
But yeah, I think I'll trim off into a few more of these. They're quite tasty and good. Mm. Now I want to show you guys how they do it, or dry it here, at North Coast Naturals. As you guys can see, this is their little drying room, and it's very important they're, you know, taking their drying seriously. I mean, curing the buds is very important to have the highest quality medicine. One of the things they got here is they got a dehumidifier in the room, some fans to push some air, and they're taking constant readings on the temperature and humidity to make sure it stays in the proper range to get the highest quality medicine here. And let me, go, let me show you guys this. I mean, this is really cool what they're doing. This really illustrates some of the quality and care that they take. What they've literally done, as you guys just saw in their grow room, um, this is part of the frame that was actually on the top. They've literally just chopped the plant off like they chop a tree down. And they just take this whole frame and they invert it. So they very minimally do any damage to the plants, number one. Number two, they're letting this hang dry with natural air circulation and letting all the nutrients in the stem flow down with gravity into the flowers so they could potentially have the best medicine. Now another reason for doing this, and check this out, I mean this is just beautiful. Wow, that's like music to my nose, is that possible? But as you guys can see, I mean, they got all these hanging down and this is more than just the reasons that I stated. They got a couple more, two more important reasons for doing it in this way. Number one, I mean, this is how the plant was, and there's lots of air space in between here, so this gets very good air circulation, so that they're mini gonna minimize the mold. One of the challenges that growers may have is that it, they may get a lot of mold growth, and nobody wants to buy moldy weed, man, or moldy marijuana. So they can ensure that they have minimal mold growth by drying in this method, because they have so much air circulation, things aren't piled in and super close to each other. Plus the other reason that's very important for doing it in this way is as I walk around, I can literally see all the buds and this is just so amazing to be up in here. Let me go ahead and give you guys a close up of what some of this looks like. And man, check that out. It looks super amazing, just drying and just like that. And uh, the other reason is you can see, I mean look as you see that camera pan, you can see, you can easily inspect all the different buds to ensure that you're getting consistent, even drying with no problems coming out. And if you do see any, you can address them immediately. So now I'm going to try some of this North Coast medicine here, drying. This is in the stage before it's dried. Normally you guys will get it dried. I think it should be all sold fresh, you know. I mean, one of the things I like that they're doing here is they're really doing a slow, dry process. This is very important to have the highest quality medicine, you know. I mean, I know when you're growing bananas, for example, and most bananas you guys are buying in the grocery store, they gas them to basically make them ripen faster. And when you do that, you don't get the complex flavors. You don't get the sugars in the bananas. And I bet you it's likewise with the medicinal herb here. You want to dry in a slow fashion so you get the most amount of nutrients because after all, that's why we're taking it, right? And so we got a bud here. And uh, for all you guys out there, this bud's for you. Mm. Whoa, man, it's blowing me away. It's so much stronger than those little baby buds I had <laughs> in the grow room, in the flower room. Oh my gosh, it's full size. Still really mild flavor, but man, I taste, I could like the essential oils are like coating my tongue with the essential fatty acids that are so good. I could only imagine all the other medicines that are in there that are good for me to eat. Once again, I want to let you guys know if you guys are eating, you know, raw buds or the leaves, it's not going to get you high. And actually, there's research to show that actually juicing the leaves specifically can be very health promoting. And there's a lot of different compounds in the leafy greens of the marijuana. It's so sad that I believe, you know, many of these growers, they throw out and get rid of the leaves when they should be also being sold as fresh greens. But it's very important to get them as fresh as possible for the most amount of nutrition. I'm really into growing and eating greens and leafy greens of the marijuana is one of the things I want to start including in my diet and now that I have a card, I could definitely do that. So uh, now that you've seen this whole grow operation, I'm going to show you, you know, one of the people behind it, the master grower, we're going to call him MIT, we're going to go in and uh, ask him some questions about North Coast Naturals why he started it, and why he's choosing to grow all organically. So now we're with MIT, the master grower here. Next, MIT, I want to talk about, you know, 
what are some of the problems with spraying chemicals on the on the medicinal herbs that people are buying? Yeah, it's a it's a common problem. Well, it's important for uh, I mean, for quite simply for health reasons. If there weren't any health ramifications, we could use chemicals all day long on everything, and it wouldn't really matter.